Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Lucid and we are back with Your Dreams, My Memes. Uh, we've got a message from Pangea. Crystal Amazons acquired. Hopefully those Onyx Amazons come quietly next. Uh, this is important for death access. Uh, I'm excited to have more places to recruit race cars. Oh, that's true. Also the nightmares. They have a ton of encumbrance though. I don't know how that would work. I think they would tire themselves out very quickly. But still, I mean, how bad could it be? They're going to be like little fear bombs that go blow up in the enemy back line. Uh, and the access to air, astral, earth, and death is going to be very nice. Yep. Uh, have gotten a scout on top of pans. I'm pretty sure I know uh, the most important bits of their bless. It reminds me of a certain Grippa build from a Blitz a long time ago. Luckily, I managed to take out everything but Grippa's cap from him that game. And I did it using Fire Shield. How convenient. Dot, 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 dot. That's very funny. Because it's this is the same Abyssia player that wrecked Grippa in that Blitz. If I was playing... Um, I think I was Saramatia. So if you want to go watch that Saramatia series, that's what he was referring to. Uh, oh no, my beautiful prophet. And literally all of the mercenaries I paid good money for. Yeah. Game is hard, Grippa. Game is very hard. Uh, okay. Alright, lots of killiness there. Uh, what, let's start with Tianchi. I don't know why I'm doing it from this menu. Uh, Tianchi. That was this battle here. And I believe that was the only TNG battle. So he's kind of boxed in now. He's got maybe a province over here he could expand to. He's got good borders with Pangea, but... Oh, and he's got a decent border here with uh, Baratos. He's looking okay. He's looking okay. How is he doing on income? I don't think we ruined his scales as much as we ruined some people's. I, we ruined them pretty fucking bad, actually. I don't know about that. <laughs> pretty bad. I mean, to be fair, he does have Order 1. So, I mean, they're not... They could be worse. Um, Baratos. Ooh, they've got a bump. So I think the job is Baratos is going to be trying to keep these guys off your commander. Just this guy has stone skin, that helps a lot. But I mean, you don't really have... Pangea chooses where the fight takes place, right? Like, you can do hold an attack, but... Uh, time for teleporting centaurs. Yeah, this is not good. They didn't get to the commander. They do outnumber him. Oh, now the javelins make a big difference. That might be the only ticket, is having a lot of these guys and javelining them. Okay. I mean, the javelins were very effective. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Now, technically, that is a win. I mean, that might be a win. They get the commander. They trade. I can't remember. I don't think Baratos can get quite as many uh, Colossi Warriors as Pan can get White Centaurs a turn. Huh. So, Bangia technically wins that. But, I mean, these guys were fighting... <laughs> Like, with the big numbers advantage. If Pangea does the Javelins, uh, especially if they have some PD to hold them still while they Javelin, they might can take the fight. But it's going to be brutal. What Pangea really, really, really needs is they need the Throne of Fire. Is that even around them? Throne of Death. Throne of Earth. The Outer Throne. Is there a Throne of Fire in this game? There's no Throne of Fire. Nothing that's the equivalent. <laughs> I didn't roll lucky on those dice. Um, Baratos moving this stuff here indicates 
There's only one reason you move this army here, and that is you're going to fight Pangea. There's no Indies over here. He's not building a fort. Um, this is he's ready to fight. Pangea could potentially PD. I'm thinking PD is not going to be amazing against Baratos's build. Um, and there's a lot of white centaur in other places. Like if these guys can make it over here, because I feel like if I was Pangea, I would know Baratos is going to attack here this turn. Some provinces don't have any PD in it. That's not a good sign. But I don't... It depends what kind of PD you have, too. Bad PD I wouldn't dump. But the problem is this is a lot of Colossi warriors. And, you know, this is just a few, a few guys left. Four dudes left, right? And he could at max have like 14. But he had 12 here. And he, could, he struggled to kill six. This is probably 18 or 20. Math doesn't look like it's going to work out. So we'll see. That's going to be an exciting part of uh, this episode or next one. We've already covered... Teen okay, so we've covered this column. Uh, let's see. We've got four minutes left. Let's see if we can get through this all. Oh, my God. Abyssia attacking Glanka. Abyssia does it. They pulled the trigger. They have everybody blessed. So they've got the larger and the more hit points. Now, Lanka's Bless, as a reminder, is Shock Resistance and Charged Body. Those go together. Fate Weaving, which is pretty good, and it's going to combo with all these other things. Blood Vengeance and Fire Shield. Fire Shield's not going to have any effect, but the other one should have an effect. Okay, so, like, this guy's stunned now from the Charged Body. Uh, so they're gonna pound the crap out of them. Now, they don't- Lanka doesn't have fire resistance, so they're gonna get the crap pounded out of them from fire shield as well. But they hit really hard. So it's not like the white centaur where they're hitting against the, the fire shield really quickly for kind of relatively low damage. Uh, cause, like, fire shield's gonna apply per attack, and, like, the centaur have two. These guys only have one, and it hits really hard, so that's a lot different math. Oh my god. Dude, they're, they're getting blown the fuck up. I mean, this is high attrition, but... Oh my gosh, that was brutal. 15 burning ones killed. You can't lose that many burning ones this early. And then a lot of salamanders. I think th these were leading expansion parties. This is just another reason, I think, to do it with... Like, you want a profit? I think this, this was his profit. Um, you want a profit for important battles like this. But I think... Probably better off having these guys at home researching. We can see a lot of demon bread over here. Oh, he's assassinated all these guys. That's why he hit it with the, the cave dude. Because he was trying to kill all these guys with assassins. So this is a little hint to Lanka that, like, hey, may not be safe. We see demon bread literally everywhere. Oh, God. The demon bread made it away. Oh, that's probably this guy. Okay, that's probably the guy. This probably is Prophet. There's some uh, burning ones down here, but otherwise, that's like all the burning ones on the map. They got just wiped. And they are not easy to replace. They're going to be easier now that he's got his cap circle cleared. But yikes. Yeah, yeah, yikes. I mean, he can... I think he wanted to take this... Uh, this Barb province. He probably could, but then this army won't be back in time to defend the capital. Warlocks... See, anti-magic would be really good against Lanka here, too. So if he was may, uh, researching and had anti-magic, that would be a kind of big deal. I don't think enchantment's normally the first thing you go for as Abyssia, though. So, Anywho, that's exciting. Alm expanding down here with his Conan Barbarians, or He-Men, excuse me.
Putting his lance catchers up front, even though there's no lances to catch. Though these might have been from an event, if I recall. Oh, he sends... I, I don't know what these were. I don't know why he had barbs and why he sent them in, but he did. They may have been from... Uh, I don't think you get barb mercs. I think he actually recruited these. So I'm not sure. He's got a big stack here. Presumably he's going to hit this farmland with that he really wants. So last turn he had the option to have this army here and attack Lanka, but he's moved it over here and wants to go for this. And Pangea has now come back and taken this, uh, this Onyx province. Oh my god. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like he got some guys decayed. Okay. So that's fine. He's got that. So these guys are way far away from everybody else. Presumably, they get back over here. The problem is he doesn't really have enough to defend if Veritos attacks him, and it looks like he will. That's, I think, the thing where, like... I think the trick is just having a critical mass of these guys and javelining... Or sniping the commander. I think either way, it's going to be hard to protect your commander from a lot of these. That's like the whole game, I think, is getting Baratos' commanders. The problem is you'll still kind of kill yourself on their treat. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's still going to be really bad on the retreat. But at least, I think it's going to be significantly better trying to kill these guys while they're routed. Anywho, that's that. Uh, T and Chi, I think we've covered them. Lanka, we've covered. I think we're done. I think we've made the rounds. So, yeah. There's possibly some nation we missed. If, if that was you, I'm sorry. Uh, let's go ahead and do the next turn. All right, we're back. We get a message from Calum. First time I've had the province lost event, I guess I just lost a lab in the mage I was recruiting. I guess I should have put 11 PD instead of 10. Yeah, I think that's uh, it's probably worth, worth doing on important provinces when you have misfortune. On the diplomatic front, I have naps with all my neighbors except TNN now. Just need like 50 turns to get ready for war. Ha! Huh. Grippa, cap circle complete, now the world. Uh-oh. We've got a bump between Hinnom with Fun Wagons. Or a Fun Wagon. And Grippa with God knows what. Because, uh, so far as I can tell, Grippa's only army got 75% killed last turn. Some indies. Wait, what? That was not the bump. Oh, so he's got Jin finally. I think Grippa can win this. He needs to be on attack. Oh, if he's on attack rear and he gets the commander, that could work. I don't know, but they're closing. Your Jin really need. Oh, please. Okay, they really need to go. They've got the commander. Hinnom's routed. This is exactly what Jin excel at. Well played, Grippa. Now, Dawn Guard from Hinnom are not going to be nearly as easy. I, I don't think these guys are going to trade well with Dawn Guard gold for gold. They'll trade okay. It's not like they won't be able to do anything against them, but it's going to be a little rough. So, okay. Ubar loses our Barbarian Lord in two camels, but kills a whole Hinnom stack. That's pretty nice. Uh, but then Gr Grippa does a ritual sacrifice of his Amazons. Gets him off the payroll. Uh, and with that, let's go to Grippa on the map. Let's see where this all happened. Here's where he did the ritual sacrifice. Wow. So Hinnom was attacking very deep into Grippa's lands. And this is a big group of dudes from Hinnom. Uh, presumably they're coming to kill. 
<laughs> like, you know, I don't think there's a casual amount of dudes like, oh, I just happen to have 60 dudes on your border at turn 13. Mm, I think this is war. Uh, sadly, though, it's a little rough. Like, if this worked, if Hinnom won this bump, it would be a lot different. But, I mean, obviously, protecting your commanders is going to matter a ton. Uh, and maybe Hinnom can do that better. But... I actually don't know. I feel like Javelins would be really good here. And he's got a lot of these light infantry. They're not going to, you know, they'll dodge the glamour, but they won't dodge the, uh, um, or they'll, they'll dodge the unseen, but they're not going to dodge the, um, ethereal. But I still think that's probably a big javelin volley could be pretty hard for Ubar. Um, so I don't know. I think you guard commander and maybe do javelin volleys. I haven't tested any of this. It's just what I think. Uh, coming down to Micklin. Oh, oh, so Micklin was right here. He's been like circling. I think we didn't really cover Micklin last uh, turn. He's been like circling around. Micklin attacks Tirnanog. These guys throw javelins. Now they hit really hard, which is pretty good against these uh, jags who have a ton of hit points. Because you don't have to worry about overkill as much. Now these jaguars have a lot of attacks in this form. The elves are like, we've hit you so much. We've done so much damage. Why aren't you dead yet? because each of these has effectively like 80 hit points. Oh no, the glamour's breaking. I mean guys, I want to show you some of these dead jaguars. Uh, 7 damage, 16 damage, 22 damage, 20, 18 damage, 21 damage. 21. This guy took so much fucking damage before he died. It is ridiculous. I think, too, you imagine, like, putting... You know, some of this you have to start imagining, like, putting wooden warriors on these guys. You know, some of the other defensive buffs. And then it's like, oh my god, that is a lot of hit points to get through. But okay. I mean, this is not trading super well. I think if, if Micklin didn't severely outnumber Tirnanog here, Tirnanog would have ruined him. But Micklin just brought a lot more to the fight. But this is pretty strange. Uh, I don't know what, the, what he's doing. He's like circled around, picked a fight with Tirnanog, but he's enveloped Helheim. So this is very, very strange. Uh, he's also expanded down here, loses a few lizards, but takes out these blowpipe men. And he's got a big squad of mercs here. Presumably he's... These mercs, if you see mercs on your border, this means you're going to attack. So he's going to attack Helheim. I mean, if you're Helheim, what do you even think? I've never seen this happen before. You have somebody that's like arced in above you and hit at, on turn four, 13, your whole top border, <laughs> your whole left border is one nation. What in the hell is going on? <laughs> I would be so confused. I mean, this means war, but it's ridiculous and hilarious. I love this. So Helm's got mercs. He's got all his sacreds on a border. I think the main thing he needs to do is combine these armies. And probably needs to combine them with archer support. So I like that he's got these mercenaries that are archers. Because I feel like you need to archer down these, these dudes uh, while your front line holds up. And maybe protect from flyers like Valkyries. I feel like that's kind of the game. Anywho, uh, that is Micklin. Uh, Hinnom and Ubar we've already covered. They had this bump. Uh, coming over to Helheim, they have expanded 
Lose one hell herding here, but take out 27 heavy cav. Gosh darn it. All right, and they still don't have the god online yet, which I don't think is surprising. It takes a while to get your god back if he dies this early. Oh, they sniped the commander. Wow, that is brutal. Let's watch that again. Here they come! Oh, that was beautiful. That was a scary province. Just ruined them. Very cool. Man, that's a lot of hell heritings here. This is a lot of elves. I think the problem is he's... I think if he can get these forces together... So I think what you actually do is you attack here and you attack here. The problem is this is like a really predictable move. I wonder if Helheim comes here to defend. Or... You patrol here with enough PD and you attack here and then you combine all your forces here the next turn. Because that's, I think, the main thing for Micklin is you have to get these forces combined. You don't really want these Jags to trade, and having these Mercs in support with Archery is going to be a really big deal for getting rid of Glamour, and then also just doing damage to these Elves. I, I mean, that's what I feel anyway. I don't know if it's correct. But it's a good window now, too, because the God's still dead. Uh, we've got a big pile of dudes over here on this fort with Baratos. So yeah, pretty interesting. Uh, Calum, we know they're thinking about attacking. They've got naps with everybody except for uh, Tirnanog. Oh, he's got a few of the Kavi archers here because we can see them getting lit up by uh, solar weapons. So flaming weapons I don't think works on these bows. Um... Where are the sacred? Okay, yeah. So they've got poison weapons and frost weapons and withering weapons and solar weapons. But I'm told flaming weapons doesn't work. Specifically because they're ice bows or something like that. Isn't that what they are? No, I think they would work, right? I don't know. You can probably put flaming arrows anyway. I don't... Does that stack flaming arrows and flaming weapons? I have no idea. Somebody told me that. That's why I didn't put it on here. Otherwise, I, I probably would have. So that's very cool. Uh, lost a few... Okay, I would say acceptable casualties. I mean, Sinosophalians fighting in a cave is pretty tough. Um, yeah, he's got a fort up already. So he's going to be slamming troops here. Uh, he's probably looking pretty good on the income graph. I bet you he's, like, number three or something. Uh, because we didn't ruin his scales either. Okay, no, he's just middle of the pack. I was thinking he's a bit better. Okay. Uh, Tirnanog. Uh, we saw them lose this thing to Miklin here. I don't see any other elf activity. So I guess he's he basically needs to get ready for Calum, who's who appears to be coming for him. And uh, that is that. Let's come over here to Baratos. So Baratos, I was thinking, would attack Pangea here. He had a ton of guys on the border. Uh, but in fact, he didn't. Uh, he backed them up. Moved them over here. And he seems to be chilling. He seems to be chilling. Did Baratos have any battles this turn? He did not. Okay, nothing to cover here. Pangea took this farm out. Ooh, we'll cover TNG in a second, but since I've got it pulled up, let's watch this battle here with TNG. 
One of the things you can do that helps a bit with the EAT and G expansion, if you use these guys, which you should for uh, expansion, is skeletal body. Uh, you're way less likely to get sniped. I don't know if it would have saved him here, but it might have. So that's a bit annoying. Uh, Pangea can potentially attack this too. It's a pretty nice province with a lava lake in it. And Tianchi's Bless is about to wake up. And it is kind of a shitty Bless right now. But it's going to be way better in a minute. <laughs> in a hot minute. Because uh, he's about to get Thunder Weapons and Death Weapons and Unholy Weapons. He's about to get all the fucking weapons. Okay, so that's that. Um, Abyssia does attack over here. Oh, and Lanka moves in after this defeat that Abyssia had and uh, is on the offensive. Okay, doesn't lose any Insura. And he's taken back basically everything that Abyssia had. Okay. Now we know Abyssia was doing some assassin expansion, so he's got some. I don't think Lanka can afford to like, I mean, here's the problem. Like if you do guard, you can probably do guard commander with some of your long dead. That probably makes more sense. Because you can't really afford to expand while having these guys on Guard Commander here. So that might be a thing, is trying to get Guard Commander long dead. Ooh, okay. And Ohm has come over here and taken this. Doesn't lose hardly any of his important units, which are these Steel Warriors. These mighty, mighty, mighty men. Hit for 41 damage. Loses his long dead and uh, some barbs. But this is now really tough. If he chooses to attack Lanka, Lanka doesn't really have much to defend this. And this honestly is a decent bless against Lanka because they're going to like one hit kill these Insuras. And they cost less gold. And I don't think they'll die in one hit. I, basically, if you put anti mag Oh, they do have pretty low MR. If you put anti magic on them. Wait, is that in? I don't know. They're going to have one more because they're in drain. But yeah, if you could have... Oh, they don't get Astral, though. You really want to get Anti-Magic on them. Because the Fire Shield isn't going to kill them in one hit. And the... Oh, they're also larger, so they have more hit points. Uh, the Charged Body... I don't know. I feel like they're going to trade, like, one for one, I guess, against the, the Ansuras. Ooh, so I don't know. I feel like if you have a Critical Mass, it could be okay. You really, really, really want anti-magic. That's not really something Ulm's bringing to the table, though. So... Is Ulm, who else might Ulm fight? Ulm could also fight Abyssia. Uh, that would actually be fine as well. In, in some ways, it would be easier. Because the fact that Abyssians have like really high protection, they're going to still damn near get one hit killed. They'll probably get two hit killed. And the fire shield isn't that big of a deal when you're swinging one great sword for like 40 something damage. With strength of giants, it's gonna be like 45. I feel like Abyssia is an easier target than Lanka in terms of a bless. Because with Lanka, you're dealing with fire shield, but also with charged body and blood vengeance. With Abyssia, you're really just dealing with like protection. And then the fact that they've got two really hard hitting swings. But those hard-hitting swings, you can, like, mitigate in a way. Because you can do, like, Legions of Steel. I feel like Abyssia is a better war target for Ulm. But he's he's posturing like he's going to go on Lanka. Uh, okay. 
And that brings us back to Grippa. Who I think we just covered. So I think we are done with this turn and with this episode. So I hope you guys are enjoying the series so far. Uh, it's going to be very exciting as these first wars break out. Uh, and the madness continues. Uh, we've got a lot of wars brewing. We've got a war raging between Lanka and Abyssia. We're about to have a war probably between uh, Helheim and Miklin. And we're probably... This is a Cold War. I'm not sure if this is going to happen. Uh... Yeah, basically, all everybody's basically going to be looking for their first war. Hinnom's looking for it. Alm's looking for it. Pangea's looking for it. Tian Chi doesn't really have much on people's borders, but he's going to be looking for it soon. Baratos is looking for it. Yeah, tune in next time. See what happens. Take care.